In the last reporting period, 11,552 new coronavirus cases were recorded in the country, putting the cumulative number of infections at 994,911. A further 245 people have succumbed to COVID-19-related complications. This takes the national death toll to 26,521. KwaZulu-Natal now has the most number of active COVID-19 cases, surpassing the Western Cape. We are now joined by Dr. Sandile Shabalala, the head of department at KwaZulu-Natal's um, Health. He joins us now. Dr. Sandile, good uh, afternoon and welcome uh, to the agenda. First of all, do you know what is attributing to these active uh, cases currently that um, KZN has now surpassed uh, the Western Cape? Firstly, let me let me greet you and greet also the um, people that are watching your show. Look, the 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 issue of um, recoveries or active cases is an issue that we are always following up. The recoveries, remember, scientifically, it's expected that after um, ten days of you being infected, we then should be able to say you have recovered if your symptoms have gone and you are uh, free of the disease. But the mobility of the people also that we are monitoring does make it difficult for us to say, is Sandile still having symptoms or he is not having symptoms? So that is why we are now trying to improve on our tracing and tracking and tracing of all our, our, um, our, our, our people that have been infected. We are worried about that. We have reached 90% before, and we think we can, we can be able to go beyond it now. Okay, so, so how then do you come to the conclusion, or how would those who are collecting the data come to the conclusion that KZN currently has the most number of um, active cases if tracking and tracing is not, supposed, is not where it is supposed to be? Tracking and tracing is happening. But I said there are issues that we look at the symptoms of the people, but we combine that with the reports that we get, reports about the deaths in the different districts. When we follow these cases, we follow cases from the time of diagnosis to the time of recovery or the time of death in the different districts. And when we follow those figures, there is when we are able to say we are having good recoveries or we're not having good recoveries, or we're not having recoveries at all. Mm. What is important that I'm mentioning is that when a person is mobile and has moved from one place to another, it then becomes difficult for us to say that person has recovered or not. Let me make an example. We do have cases that would have come from the Eastern Cape, and those people would have been diagnosed in Wazulu Natal, and then they leave going back to the Eastern Cape. Those people cannot be recorded by us as having recovered or not because we do not know the fate that would have happened to them. So those are the snacks that we experience. However, those that we can follow, we follow the issue of the symptoms, but we follow the issue of when we are tracing them, we do find them and find where they are, and then we know. The issue of testing was closed down because you will remember initially, we would say 14 days you must be on isolation. Following that, you then need to be tested. But that was changed. And the change therefore says we just need to follow you and check whether you are still symptomatic. If you are symptomatic, we then check whether is it still the COVID-19 or something else. But when you're not symptomatic, the, the logical assumption is that you then have recovered unless we have come to know that this person has died. So that is the logic that we are following. Mm. So, so if you compare this to what was happening back with level 5 as well as level 4, the where there was the actual retest, are you able to discern whether these numbers are actually reliable when we don't have the retest taking place, when you only base this based on assumption? The, the, the mobility of the community, remember, let me make an example. In Guazulu Natal, we have received people who have um, come back from different provinces who have come back home. We have people uh, who are coming from different countries who have come to holiday. We have people who have come from within the country, South Africa, who have come for holidays. And in no time, those people would, would leave after we would have then um, uh, found them to be positive. 
But what we try to do is to also work with the National Department of Health and work with the National Institute for Communicable Diseases to follow these people. But when we follow them, we are not following them in terms of their fate. We follow them to say, let them let them be handed over to their provinces so that their provinces will therefore follow them. It is a difficult situation, more so because of the current behavior of the people. You've spoken to the level five, and people are behaving very differently, such that our non-pharmaceutical interventions really need more of us to work other than just the healthcare workers. That's how we're looking at it currently. Okay, so we were speaking to the South African Medical Association earlier on, and one of the submissions that they've made is an argument that there should be stricter um, regulations being put in place, and the suggestion is that let's move back to uh, level two. Is this something that uh, your department is considering in KZN, or the government has had a conversation around? We, we, it, it, would make, it would make life a little bit better if um, people were not more as mobile as they are. However, the president, the government nationally and the government provincially have a lot of other things to consider for them to be able to say, do we go back to any, any level uh, of lockdown? So all we are saying is that even after the, the resurgence, we still will be having coronavirus. And the behavior of our people becomes... Okay, Dr. Sandile Shabalala there. Um, that link has just frozen. We'll try to get back to him. Okay, Dr. Shabalala, we lost you there for a second. You can go ahead. You, you lost me. Yes, you can, you can go ahead. Yeah, we, we, we are saying the government considers a lot of things for them to move to any level of lockdown. A lockdown that limits the people going to the hospitals is an advantage to the health system. But what is important is that all of us in the country must accept that there is a new normal because even after the resurgence, we still will be having a coronavirus that will spread depending on how we behave. So it is important that our behavior in terms of sanitizing, washing of hands and all the things that we've been told are adhered to as the non-pharmaceutical uh, interventions at all levels. So that will make us to be able to live with the virus because it's going to be with us for a long time. Okay, let me ask the question this way. Is there any need for any stricter restrictions based on the information that you currently have, including um, the behavior of human beings? I do there, but I, I thought you were asking a question that uh, is there a need for stricter restrictions? Yes. There is a need for... Yes, there is a need for the community to really work with the government. Remember, restricting people almost every time does also have other uh, connotations or implications to them. We did see at some stage when we were at level five, people uh, uh, where, where we had a, an increase in the gender-based violence and other violent um, uh, cases that we see. So if we're going to be solving one problem but creating another, it then says all the things that are on the table must be looked at. And when we've done that, we say as a country, how do we move? But our take is that the government and the people themselves, we must work together. It, it does give us problems, the fact that um, it's a festive season. People are enjoying themselves. People are taking alcohol. And as such, the level of responsibility is not as high as we would like it to be. So all those we are considering as health, but the government is consider more than that and then assist us in making sure that we win against the, the researchers. Okay. How would you describe the pressure on the healthcare system currently in KZN since the start of the festive season? The pressure is very high. It has always been high. And uh, we also are seeing that even some of our healthcare workers do get infected themselves. But besides being infected, they are becoming exhausted. The um, number of beds that have to be looked after are increasing, so there is a pressure. But now these beds are increasing in terms of beds for COVID-19 patients, but also beds for non-COVID-19 patients, including trauma patients. So there is pressure, and we are working 24 hours every day to ensure that um, 
we, we, we reduce all those pressures. But as I say, it depends on us working together with the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, the field hospitals that were built, are those assisting at all? The field hospitals definitely are assisting. We have started to, to use them. We actually are reconsidering opening one of them. There is a time where our numbers went down such that we closed down on the um, Royal Showgrounds Field Hospital. We are looking at opening it up again because of the numbers, but we, well, I can definitely say that the field hospitals are assisting us a lot. But the repurposed hospitals also that we, we repurposed in the, in the uh, province are making a lot of difference. And the numbers of staff that were given to us by the Premier to beef up the staff that we had is, is also assisting. So we, we, we have um, some coping mechanisms that we are looking at, but we think the, the, the load is getting higher and higher every day. Although I must say, today as a province, we recorded 4,100 when we've been recording 4,800 on a daily basis. It's, uh, it's not a big number, but it made us um, uh, feel a little bit better, and we're hoping that all the interventions we are putting in are making some difference. Mm. The Sunday Times this morning reporting on a lack of oxygen in various hospitals. How is your department doing in KZN? Look, we, we monitor on a day-to-day -day basis. I've not been reported to, at 4 a.m. I was already up and monitoring most of our institutions. We, we have not been reported on the oxygen being lacking in, in the institutions that I've, I've been reported on. But we also are continuing to work with Afrox to increase oxygen, particularly in the field hospitals and other areas. But we also have cylinders that are, are all over the province, which we are moving all over. The only challenge is that we are working uh, our staff so hard that they have to work almost 24 hours. But we feel there is nothing that we can do. It is lives that we are concerned about. Speaking about um, the staff themselves, earlier on as well with the with Denosa as well as Sama, one of the issues that they've been emphasizing on is moratoriums on um, these vacancies or filling these vacancies. Are there any vacancies in KZN and can you tell us whether or not these vacancies will be filled and the impact that it's having on the health system? There are vacancies that um, are, are, are existing in the province. There are vacancies that are going to be filled in January, particularly from the people that have just finished their community service or some of the ComServe uh, um, doctors and nurses and other specialties will be taken in. So there are posts that are going to be filled. However, filling uh, uh, vacancies is critical. The important thing also is filling vacancies in certain sectors and certain specialties. So as a province, we're not only looking at filling vacancies, but also we're looking at creating enough capacity, enough skill, so that even after COVID-19, we have skill that can be utilized all over the province. There are many other uh, methods we're looking at. I, lo I, I did allude to the um, agreement that we reached with the Premier where we were given six months to employ people on contract and that has been increased as well. So all those are means we are using to increase the capacity uh, within the province. Okay, just quickly then, Dr. Shavalala, on the new variant that is the 541V2, have you detected any cases in KZN? Look, the, the, the scientific um, laboratories are saying they have detected the, 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 the 501, and we also have seen people being where we are told that a person is diagnosed today and they, they, they die the next day. So we think really there is this uh, variant and it is more virulent than the, the previous one. And it's for that reason that we're saying the precautions must be taken care of very much so by everybody. Okay, thank you so much. That is Dr. Shabalala, who is the head of um, department, the Department of Health in KZN. Really appreciate your time with that. Let's